let's see what's going on here. This issue, people like to say that it's a complicated issue, and I don't actually think it is. I think it's very simple. It all boils down to, do you actually think that trans women and intersex women are real women and are really female? What's intersex? Can someone tell me what? I don't know all these terms, man. It's like every day you wake up, new terms come out. What's an intersex? Mm -hmm. Or not. And if you do, it's very simple. Just stop policing who counts as a real woman. Because this has had history of racism built into it over the years. No, it hasn't. It's not an accident that the intersex athletes who get singled out are women of color from the global south. Because who gets singled out for scrutiny is based on white women's conceptions of femininity. And that's being weaponized against trans people too. So it's a fear of protecting the fragile, weak, cis white woman from the rest of us. So, so there are many elements to what you say. People are actually applauding. This. <laughs> just, she's just talking a whole bunch of nonsense. People are actually applauding this bunch of NPCs. Which I appreciate. So let, let's try break them down. One thing that confuses me personally is it, it, it seems like we have discussions about who should participate in which category and how. You know, on the face of it, it seems simple, as you say. You know, if somebody identifies as a woman, if they're transgender, they can compete against women who are born biologically, and, and then if not, then not. But then there are many who would argue who are not transphobes. There are many who, who are born biologically women who will say, but you have an unnatural advantage over me, and that makes the sport unfair. How do, you, how do you respond to that? Yeah, there's lots of ways you can respond to that. So the first is the, the very language of you were born and I'm not biological somehow, like I don't think I'm a cyborg. So like this idea that like, oh, you're not a biological woman. Well, I am a woman, that's a fact. I am female, so all my identity records, my racing license, my medical records all say female, mm -hmm. right? And I'm pretty sure I made a biological stuff. So I'm a biological female mm -hmm. as well. So this question of, do trans women have an advantage over cis women? We don't know. Um, in fact, there's basically no published research on this question. However... Uh, testosterone levels, bone density? What are you talking about? Uh, there's good reason to think that there isn't, but I think it's irrelevant because we... It's irrelevant because my feelings... Let's get it to my feelings. It's all about feelings. Got a bunch of these people in the army now. A bunch of these people in the army. Let me see you win any serious wars. I'm watching. We allow all kinds of competitive advantages within women's sport. So one example I love to talk about is the 2016 Rio Olympic women's high jump final. First place was over six foot three. Tenth place was five foot five. So a ten and a half inch. Just let just put things in perspective. If a straight person, let's say a straight white man, you would never see a straight white male given this platform like this to talk about straight white men's rights and privilege. <laughs> no, no. Even a straight black man, you would never see them given a platform like this to talk about the woes of the black men. No, 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 no. They don't want that. This is what they want. This is the direction they're pushing society towards. Trevor Noah is sitting there. He's like battling with this, this type of ideology in his mind, trying to rebuttal stuff, but he can't really say, he can't really be himself because he's reached that, self, that certain level of celebrity. He's trying to stay there. The way you stay there is by going along with what the current trend is that the elites are trying to push or you get dropped down so hard like an anchor like like like, like a rock in a river and height difference between first and tenth at the olympics okay. in high jump right and we call that fair okay so the range of body types within the female category is way way bigger than anything that could be attributed to trans women. Uh -huh. So if there's an advantage, and I'm not saying that there is, for trans women in women's sport, it's not an unfair advantage. 
but also we've been competing at trying to compete at the highest level for decades. We've been allowed to compete for decades. And no one has won an elite world championship. No one has won an Olympic gold medal. This Tokyo Olympics was the first time trans women even qualified for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So this idea that trans women are suddenly going to take over women's sport is an irrational fear of trans women, <laughs> which is the dictionary <laughs> definition of transphobia. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, but they are taking over women's sports. You never get it the other way around. You never see trans men and women that are men dressed up. Or, I don't know. Women that pretend to be men. You are not going to see them in like the UFC trying to fight. See a biological woman in the UFC or in a hundred meter race or in any men's sports in basketball or whatever. You, would you see them over there trying to compete with real biological men? Near, but of course you're going to have men trying to compete in women's sports because I know they're going to dominate. Trying to go break all their records, which, which they are. Very dangerous, very, very, very dangerous. Because you have these muscular men in pink leggings playing rugby with women now and just smashing through them, causing permanent damage. It's interesting that you say that, you know, because stop clapping for nonsense, man. It's interesting that you say that because I think if, if I were to push back or, you know, even not even playing devil's advocates, uh, there, were, there are a few things that could be argued. Number one, you could argue that although the trans woman who competed in the Olympics didn't dominate, she did beat a field of women who might have qualified for that position, right? Um, secondly, when you talk about the height differences, I, I agree with this completely, but there, there are many who would argue that we exist in a state where a lot of the surgeries are new, a lot of the technology, just the technology is new. Transgenderism is not new. We know it throughout time, we've seen it throughout history. But there are many who would say, how do we ensure that we are creating some sort of standard? And the reason, the reason we talk to this, is, you know, we talk about this is, it's the reason they have to regulate, uh, regulate uh, performance enhancing drugs. For instance, what is fair? What can you drink? What can you not drink? What can you consume? What can you not consume? Uh, the only people that suffer all this are the biological women. They're the ones that said there's a huge disadvantage this is not fair man create a different genre for the wannabe women and the wannabe men make a different genre for them let them do whatever they want over there you can't put them with the biological sex it's bad it's really 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 bad um but of course all this is done on, on purpose some would say if you are born that way that's how sport has determined who goes where and then some would say, no, who, regardless of who you are, you should be able to compete. My question then comes in from a really, honestly, a different place. I look at somebody like Oscar Pistorius from South Africa. You see what, he's, what Trevor Noah is doing? He's trying to put in some common sense. He's trying to, you know, but he's letting the people know and his handlers and everybody watching like, look, I'm for you. I'm for, I'm for you. I agree with you. But I just want to say this little thing here and there. But I agree with you. Just letting everybody know. Just letting all the bigger ups know. I agree. I do agree with her. But I'm just going to say this little thing. That's, that's what he's trying. That's what he's doing. That's why whenever he's trying to make any sort of sense, he first says that. Like, look, I agree with you. Because he knows the hammer is going to come down on him if he doesn't get in line. Right. He was the double amputee. Yep. And Oscar Pistorius actually went, well, I want to compete in the able-bodied race. Mm -hmm. Right? And people are like, well, do you have an advantage? Do you not? Et cetera, et cetera, because of the prosthetics. But then could there not be an argument if there is no advantage in that, that then trans women should be able to compete, but in the men's races then, because they'd still be able to compete in the sports. But they're women and they're female. So, like I said, this boils down to are trans women really women? No. Are they really female? Because if you think yes, then we belong competing with other women. So. This is just stupid. This is just stupid. Oh, look at this guy he says here, mental, uh, men, men, mental moto. You can't see it because my camera's there, but he says, oh, screw it up. Yeah, there you go. He says, biology says stronger bone density, larger lung capa capacity, muscle fibers are built for lifting heavier. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How does a birth certificate say you weirdo? Well, here we go. This, 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 this is this is the whole thing. Getting everyone fighting. This, this is the whole. This is the end result here that the powers of be want. Get everyone, the comment section, and everyone in real life arguing and fighting over nonsense. 
there's always been transgenders in history. There's always been trans. There was this vast, vast, vast minority to the level it didn't even matter. It was that tiny. They, they, it didn't cause this huge ruckus in the community, but now they're putting them in the limelight because it's going to cause, you know, little arguments here and there, a little fight, a little tribalism here and there, because that's what they're trying to create. They're trying to create tribalism. It's simple. What they did in the African world is what they're doing in the Western world. What they did in the African world, I'll just tell you very quick before I go, what they did in the African world, right? And that's the same people, the same bloodlines, the same people that are doing this in the Western world now. In order to rule over our people effectively, merge them all together. So the first thing they did, a different, they go to a certain area in Africa and they look for this country, this country, that nation, that nation, that nation, that nation, and they merge them all together, make them one country. People that were separated because of tribalism and all that, they separated themselves and were living fine, even working amongst themselves, doing trades with this culture and that culture. Everything was fine. Then when the Brits came, they merged them all together because it's easy for them to rule over them when you merge them all together like that because then their differences are that close. They're going to start fighting over it. They're going to start fighting over nonsense like territory and language and this and that. When they're fighting over each other, fighting over nonsense, then it's easier for you to rule over them, put your stooges a rule over them and take the loot. It's easy. This is this is classic divide and rule. That's what they're doing. The African world has been conquered, like still being conquered till today. It's a proven method that works over that works from time and time from since time immemorial. It's, it's worked. So that's what they're using now on their own people back home. I can see it. I can see it from a mile away. Because I grew up on the things like that. You can't fool me, man. Draw bow.